Hello everybody, uh, last class we are discussing the homogeneous and heterogeneous nucleation processes. Now today we will try to discuss that what is the growth uh, of a pure solid that means what a the solidification front actually moves uh, that we will try to explain in this particular uh, class. So uh, two different types of the solid liquid interface basically solidification growth means we simply understand that that solid liquid interface uh, uh, the, um, the moves in a different way depending upon the uh, conditions uh, may be degree of undercooling or superheating conditions for the liquid all actually matters to understand the growth of a pure solid. But to understand that particular growth we have to we can define two different types of the solid liquid interface one is the atomically rough or some is called also diffuse interface and that is normally associated with the metallic system. So, metallic uh, metallic uh, metal or uh, metallic alloy metal alloy. Now, in other type of the interface that is called atomically very flat or we can say this is a sharp interface and that is normally applicable in case of the non metallic materials. So, with reference to this particular interface. Uh, we will try to understand how a solidification front moves basically what way the solid liquid interface moves. So, there might be one when you try to understand then there is a diffuse interface or atomically uh, a rough interface. So, in that case we can we can say that there is a continuous migration of the diffuse solid liquid interface moves. I am talking about that uh, solidification behavior or growth in case of the uh, metallic alloy. So, we understand that delta G that means Gibbs free energy change is associated L by del T m and into delta T i. So, Gibbs free energy change is the uh, this expression already we have derived. So, it basically depends on the undercooling uh, degree of undercooling at the interface. So, delta T i indicates that and that degree of undercooling is basically how what is the maximum possible temperatures can deviate uh, uh, in the in the liquid phase that is below the melting point temperature. So, that is the below equilibrium melting point temperature T m here the T m we consider this equilibrium melting point temperature and we can estimate the delta G is equal to L by T m into delta T i. Now, this is the Gibbs free energy available uh, during the uh, uh, during the solidification and associated with the pure metal. Now, rate of solidification or maybe the speed of the solidification from moves that actually can be expressed is the velocity V equal to K into delta T i. So, I can say that this actually link the velocity is basically linearly related to the degree of undercooling existence in a during the solidification process. But usually theoretically K values is very high and such that to maintain a particular rate of solidification then delta T sometimes or open it becomes uh, a fraction. So, therefore, in that case probably I can say that delta T can be neglected and solid liquid interface is assumed to be at the uh, is happening at the equilibrium temperature equilibrium melting temperature. So, basically the interface is assumed to existence at the equilibrium temperature T m because delta T m delta T at the degree of undercooling is very low to maintain the certain rate of solidification at the interface of the interface. Now, it is understood that solidification of metals is basically usually a diffusion control process. So, that means we assume the surface is a atomically rough surface. So, when there is atomically rough surface so diffusion to occurs. So, such that the diffusion can be in the two different way we can we can say that is the growth for in case of the pure metal it is a we can say that uh, growth occurs at a rate of the uh, control by the heat conduction or I can say it is a diffusion uh, in, in that case. But in alloy solidification it is actually depends on the solute concentration. So, therefore, diffusion actually uh, linked with the solute concentration, but in case of the pure metal uh, we can say that uh, it is a basically controlled by the heat conduction or other way I can say it is a controlled by the pure thermal diffusion associated with the in case of the pure metal. So, here this is for pure metal 
uh, this process and this is for the alloy system. So, one by one we will discuss in case of the pure metal and uh, how the sol what way the solidification stability exists uh, uh, that means uh, in case of the pure metal as well as the stability for the in case of the alloy system and that how stability depends on the, the solute concentration in case of the binary alloy system both we will try to discuss here. Now, so definitely metals are associated with the atomically rough interface. So, we can expect there is a continuous growth of the diffuse surface. So, it moves with this thing with certain velocity here we can see the V equal to k into delta T i that means this is the expression that is a continuous growth of the rough interface. So, diffusion occurs along one uh, in this linear way it depends on the that degree of undercooling. Now, there might be some lateral growth also. So, the lateral growth may also happen material is having high entropy of fusion or high entropy of melting which is normally associated with the atomically smooth surface or we can say the closed pack interface they are associated with the uh, high entropy of melting. So, we understand that delta S is basically is the L by approximately L by T m. So, therefore, high entropy of fusion it depends on either high value of L or low value of the melting point temperature. So, usually the polymeric material uh, as uh, having the low melting point temperature as compared to the metal. So, therefore, in that case the lower value of uh, um, melting point temperature is it is basically indicates that high value of uh, entropy of melting. So, then high value of entropy of melting there we can observe some kind of the lateral growth also. Now, to understand these things that uh, distinguish between the growth of a pure metal alloy as well as the non-metallic metal. So, these things are the, the very important that surface nucleation also occurs which is mostly associated with the non-metallic material. Even spiral growth also associated with the non-metallic material and growth from the intersection that is the associated non-metallic material. Because non-metallic material the interface we can consider as a very smooth as compared to the, the uh, metallic material. So, therefore, if we compare these uh, three different types of the uh, uh, three different cases the growth of a uh, pure solid it can be like that only you can see the first figure this straight line indicates the growth of the pure metal and there is a that is a continuous growth. So, it is associated to the interface is not atomically if you look to the atomic scale the it is not very uh, smooth surface it is a very uh, uh, rough rough interface. So, there when there is a existence of the rough interface at the atomic scale we can expect this is a continuous growth of the uh, solid occurs or I can say that there is a continuous movement of the solid liquid interface happens on particular velocity v. So, that is the uh, expression for that. So, that means it is linearly varying with the delta T i. So, delta T i is the degree of undercooling here. Now, spiral growth also, but spiral growth is associated with the smooth interface or mostly associated with the non-metallic material. So, here velocity is basically depends on the delta T square. Similarly, for when there is a surface nucleus and exists in case of the non-metallic material. So, smooth interface it moves velocity is proportional to the exponential way it is varying uh, with the k 2 by delta t i that means exponential it depends on the uh, degree of undercooling. Now, graphically if we plot it one is a linearly varying continuous growth other case is the spiral growth smooth interface if you see the initially at the very low value of the degree of undercooling the growth rate is very low, but suddenly at the limiting certain values of the delta t i that then the growth rate is very high. And this is similar way also exponential that smooth uh, when there is a surface nucleation that means, over the surface nucleation in that case also growth rate also not very linear. So, here initially the surface nucleation occurs up to uh, the certain values of the degree of undercooling and in that case growth rate is very low at the initial phase if you see, but suddenly over a narrow zone when it is narrow values of the uh, particular values of the uh, degree of undercooling delta T i then is a rapid growth of the observed in case of the surface nucleus. Actually, spiral growth and surface nucleus is basically is associated with the smooth interface and continuous growth is associated with the uh, that is for the uh, rough uh, interface. So, therefore, sometimes also atomically smooth interface in that case the migrate by the ledge formation and the lateral growth is associated with the atomically smooth interface. So, ledge formation is basically it is basically deviated from the original path and it's, it can takes a particular uh, 
uh, safe that means not following the exact path it is deviated from this path and it can create uh, uh, the di direction growth direction in, uh, in some other uh, direction. So, therefore, this type of the growth phenomena we can observe in case of the pure solid and we can easily distinguish the growth uh, in case of the pure um, the pure metal and in case of the um, in case of the non metallic metal or other way we can distinguish the growth mechanism uh, in case of the uh, rough interface what it is moving and other cases is the smooth interface we can we can see that. So, therefore, now growth of a pure solid we are looking into the uh, metallic material. So, therefore, pure metal in that case the growth rate depends on the, the what way the latent heat is extracted uh, from the solid liquid interface. So, that uh, it dip, uh, this the rate of the extraction of the uh, latent heat and the uh, interface stability also depends on the what a which direction heat is conducted away. So, based on that the interface stability forms and looking into the inter interface stability we can say whether any planar growth or dendritic growth may happen associated with the metal. So, we will try to analyze or discuss this particular uh, matter here. So, if we see that to take an example that that uh, suppose there is a uh, one interface is there between solid and liquid interface and we can see that conduction may happen the heat conduction may happen happens either through the solid or through the liquid during the solidification process and depending upon the temperature gradient. For example, first cases we consider the superheated liquid we consider the superheated liquid and this is the liquid phase and the solid phase and in the superheated liquid here you can see that that uh, that uh, solid phase the temperature gradient the temperature gradient is slope is much more the temperature gradient is more as compared to the liquid phase. So, when it is the case in that case the heat will be extracted. So, heat will be moving in this particular direction and the when the heat will be moving particular direction and the towards the liquid there is a uh, protrusion will be created in the small bump will be created here and the on the liquid phase that means solid will try to grow on this particular creating by the protrusion and then uh, dip then uh, the heat will be extracted through this thing. So, therefore, once it creates some kind of the protrusion therefore, the rate of the heat conduction are uh, in the particular direction is changing it is a because this is not not exactly the flat surface. So, after creating some kind of the small bump here. So, in that case we can we can say that the energy this balance this thing the temperature that k s the thermal k equal to d, the heat flux k s q equal to k into d t by d x k s in the temperature gradient in the solid phase equal to k l the thermal conductivity of the liquid phase into temperature gradient uh, t dot l plus what the latent heat is considered. So, v is the growth rate which is link with v is the growth rate and l v is the latent heat of fusion. So, these are the related in this way or I can say the expression is like that K s into temperature gradient will d t s by d x equal to K l d t l by d x equal to V into L V. So, L V is the latent heat. So, here you can see the temperature gradient this equation will always be useful to understand what a heat is conducted because this is the I can say that this is the balancing of the energy balancing we are maintaining here. Now, this is the nature of the superheated liquid. Now, what happens if there is undercooled liquid? So, undercooled liquid we see that undercooled liquid there is a within the liquid zone undercooled means within the liquid phase there is a very localized position there is a decrement of the temperature which is below the melting point temperature. So, uh, in that case the liquid phase there may be the temperature gradient much much more but very localized position. And uh, solid phase the temperature gradient is low in this case if the temperature gradient is low but temperature gradient is very high. So, heat will be extracted from solid phase to liquid phase once it is heat is extracted from the solid phase to liquid phase also it creates the uh, we can create the uh, small bump will be created we are assuming the small bump will be created and here you can see the heat will be extracted this direction because it is no longer as a plane surface. Therefore, I can say it is particular comment that in a pure metal solidification is actually controlled by the rate at which the latent heat of the solidification can be conducted away from the solid liquid interface entirely depend on this thing solidification can be controlled how the latent is extracted at the interface. 
Now, if we try to understand that what way it can clear the planar interface or st now to some extent what or the how the stable form of the uh, solid liquid interface. So, that we we are repeating the same thing here also the first case superheated liquid here and heat is extracted from uh, this thing this direction it is moving because of there is a difference in the temperature gradient and you can see that uh, the bump will be created that means small protrusion will be created and then heat transfer rate of the heat transfer will be affected this particular zone. Therefore, in that case it will be uh, more uh, flat type of these things. So, will be created this zone in this cases and the in this case it will be created by heat is extracted through the when heat will be extracted through the solid. So, therefore, in that case it will prefer to promote some kind of the more or less almost planar interface. I will discuss later on also and but when heat will be conducted into the liquid that means because of the presence of the degree of undercooling in the liquid metal in that case degree of undercooling when is more uh, in the, in that cases therefore heat will be extracted from solid to liquid but when heat will be extracted from from solid to liquid in that case stability the tip there is a some temperature rate of temperature heat, heat extraction uh, at the interface will be growth in this direction it may not be very stable so it is creating uh, the tip will be uh, growing in particular direction then heat will be not very stable and in that case it will be create the lateral uh, lateral direction that there is small uh, solidified zone will be created. So, in that way it will create some kind of the not it will not be create very very uh, uh, planar interface rather it will create kind of the dendritic interface. We can say this particular points also what I to understand this thing say point A, point A is the uh, so, we assuming the solid grows into the superheated liquid that uh, the first case and a planar interface is more stable. So, that we have already seen uh, graphically also, but what we can explain these things in we can say that when there is a small protrusion that means therefore, for the planar interface the R will always starts, tends to infinity that means the planar interface is that radius of curvature is tends to infinity and in, in that case Gibbs Thompson effect can be neglected. If you remember uh, when you try to understand the interface uh, um, in, in case of the uh, during the solidification process we say when there is a curvature effect is basically taken care of by the Gibbs Thompson effect. So, since R tends to infinity for a planar interface, so radius of curvature is tends to infinity therefore, Gibbs Thompson effect can be neglected in this particular case. So, the when it is effect is neglected the curvature effect then we can say the equilibrium temperature remains exactly at the melting close to the melting point temperature. So, that melting point temperature is the equilibrium temperature during this process. Now, temperature gradient in the liquid will increase and the solid it will decrease due to the heat transfer. But, uh, uh, if you see that liquid will increase liquid phase the the when the heat will be uh, extracted from uh, liquid to solid phase. So, therefore, in that case from liquid to solid phase. So, temperature gradient in liquid phase gradually increase and solid it will uh, decrease. So, when it is solid it will decrease there. Therefore, consequently more amount of the heat will be conducted into the the the, the this bump that means protrude, um, this uh, protruding solid and um, less air that means the air it, it will be very less. So, therefore, in that case growth will be controlled we will try to uh, growth rate will be decrease and this gradually this bump will de gradually disappear and try to make a complete uh, make a uh, like a planar front it will try to create. Other cases when the solid grows into the superheated liquid. So, in the presence of the degree of undercooling in the in the in the liquid phase therefore, in that case negative temperature gradient becomes more negative in the liquid phase. So, therefore, heat will be more effectively removed from the tip than the surrounding. So, therefore, when it is creating any kind of the tip, so liquid will be more effectively extracted, more effectively removed from the tip, from the tip. So, it is the what is the rate of the heat transfer is much more as compared to the other direction. So, therefore, what will happen in that case? It allows to grow preferentially that means one direction it will try to allow grow much more rather than other direction. So, therefore, if it is like that, so in that case the solid liquid interface will be grow into the super cool liquid which is more unstable. So, grow may not be able to sustain the one particular direction it becomes more unstable. So, when in that situation it will try to create some kind of the small lateral direction it will be create some kind of the uh, 
solidified zone. Therefore, such a situation arises at the beginning of the solidification, but if the nucleation occurs at the impurity particles in the bulk of the liquid. So, over the bulk of the liquid, the nucleation occurs at the impurity particle, this situation actually arises. So, it uh, in that case that the, uh, the solid liquid interface will be uh, more unstable in, the, in this particular case. So, I mean to say that when there is a, a planar font is more stable, but in this case the planar font is not stable, rather it is a planar font is the unstable. So, in that case it is prefer heat transfer direction is the one, one particular orientation is more heat will be uh, uh, extracted. So, that is why this way the, when the solid grows into the supercooled liquid it is the not exactly uh, the planar font is not stable in this particular case. We can do further analysis also. So, therefore, in this second case the primary arm elongates the we can see that primary arm elongates uh, the surface and becomes unstable and basically uh, prime it breaks up breaks and take taking part the secondary and ternary arms it will be creating after breaking in the primary this is the primary arm one particular direction it will break and creates the secondary and ternary arm secondary and again it will be the ternary arm and in, in this case so that will be creating in the secondary ternary arm so therefore solid particles grow into the supercooled liquid and latent heat is conducted away again into the liquid. So, in that situation the shape of the solid is known as the dendritic structure. So, that means it will create this kind of the structure. So, so this is the uh, uh, this is normally called the dendritic structure. The shape of the solid is known as the dendritic and this dendritic structure is in case of the pure metal. Remember dendrites in pure metal is actually called the thermal dendrite which is different from the dendrite system in alloy. So, remember in case of pure metal the dendritic structure is which is called the thermal dendrite because in this case diffusion is mainly controlled by the heat conduction only. So, that is why it is called the pure metal the dendritic structure is called the thermal dendrite and which is completely different from the uh, dendrites in the alloy system because dendrite in the alloy system is also influenced by the solute concentration in case of the alloy system. So, an example that experimentally dendritic arm 100 for the cubic metals and 1100 in the HCP metal. This is the preferred direction. Dendritic arm is follow in this particular direction. Now, further we will discuss on the development of the thermal dendrite. Uh, we will try to look into how it works and we will see this is the typical example of the thermal dendrite. And of course, in case of the pure metal, you know it is understood that in case of the pure metal, uh, the the driving force for the nucleation is basically degree of undercooling. So, therefore, the high in presence of the high degree of undercooling actually thermal dendrite in case of the pure metal is exactly forms. So, development of thermal dendrites uh, we can see the tip of the growing dendrite. So, uh, which is different from the planar interface. So, planar interface is basically the the one one plane basically here to here, but in the in this case we can see this as a uh, one 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 particular part of the thermal dendrite if we consider. So, in that case we can assume the solid is in isothermal condition that means solid part is in isothermal condition because more or less uniform temperature there is no not much of temperature gradient in case of the uh, solid because if you see the second case here you can see uh, the in the second case that means this case if you see the temperature gradient is almost flat that means solid phase temperature gradient is very low whatever temperature gradient existent in case of the uh, liquid phase and that is the supercooled liquid. So, therefore, uh, uh, in this case that uh, we can assume the uh, solid is isothermal that means that there is a temperature gradient is almost 0 in that case and this temperature uh, this temperature gradient we are assuming 0 in the direction of the growth growth direction T dot S is measured in the direction of the V that means in the growth direction we are measuring. Now, solution from a hemispherical strip, we are assuming this as a hemispherical tip uh, and the, that is grow that one part of the dendritic structure forms in the supercooled liquid. In that case, the hemispherical tip we can see the temperature gradient in the liquid phase, it can be delta T c by r. So, delta T c by r delta T c equal to the difference between the interface temperature and temperature of the supercooled liquid far from dendritic. So, far from away from the dendritic structure that is the temperature is the 
infinity t infinity that is the temperature and at the interface the temperature is say ti. So, based on that we can say that is the degree of undercooling is basically delta T c and therefore, the temperature gradient will be delta T c by distance. So, I can say that uh, it is a solid piece is almost uh, the similar kind of the temperature. So, at a distance r the temperature uh, is the basically delta T c by r is the the it is a radius of curvature on the hemispherical part. So, therefore, this temperature gradient at this particular point that T infinity T i interface temperature and T infinity divided by r that indicates the temperature gradient at this particular point. Now, velocity can be estimated like that because in this case velocity can be like that because in this case this temperature gradient for the solid phase if you put this as a 0 then from here you can see the velocity is L v by k minus k L T L dot means this is the T L dot temperature gradient in the liquid phase by L v and therefore, minus k L by L v divided by delta T c by r delta T c the I assume that is the uh, we just balance the negative sign. So, delta T c the temperature gradient here you can see the temperature gradient T i interface temperature to the uh, away from this thing the uh, in uh, temperature uh, uh, from the interface this is the delta T. So, this temperature gradient is the delta T c. So, we can we can estimate the the this growth rate v equal to this. Now, for a given delta T particular temperature uh, this degree of undercooling rapid growth will be favored by small value of the r because but rapid growth will be filled the radius of curvature is very small. So, in that cases rapid growth will be filled because v value will be much more if r is small because if r is small then v value will be a growth rate will be much more the in that case it is very obvious even for a for a particular values of the delta T c because degree of undercooling we cannot vary too much uh, because degree of undercooling for a particular system or metal it is very basically more or less uh, it is a very low value or more or less almost fixed value. So, therefore, so it depends on the velocity v depend on the radius of curvature in this particular case radius of curvature for the part of the dendritic part structure. So, values of the r uh, therefore, because small value of the r means effective heat transfer one particular direction is much more. So, therefore, increasing effective value of heat conduction that is why r less means the growth rate will be much more. Now, we can look into the other aspect Gibbs Thomson effect equilibrium across the curve interface and we are assuming it is occurs at the undercooling of the delta T r. So, Gibbs Thompson effect that means here Gibbs Thompson is basically curvature effect if you look into that is happened the degrees of undercooling delta T r. We actually total degrees of uh, undercooling we can divide into two part one is the delta T r other is the delta T c. So, delta T c we can calculate it now, now if we look into the effect of the curvature therefore, we can estimate the delta T r that is available at the degree of undercooling delta T r. So, if delta T r is degree of undercooling so we can see that delta G v that means, Gibbs free energy volume Gibbs free energy is L v delta T by T m at the equivalent temperature t melting point temperature T m even, even delta G v can also be estimated twice gamma by R surface free energy also gamma uh, the, uh, the surface energy. So, twice gamma by R. So, make it equal in this particular point and here replace delta T equal to the temperature getting delta T r because we are assuming delta T r is the available for the uh, 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 the for the Gibbs Thompson e effect equilibrium ar around the melting point temperature. So, once we make this equal we can find out the delta T r equal to twice gamma T m by L v into R. So, here you can see that maximum values of the uh, delta T r is possible minimum values of the R. So, minimum R tends to values of the maximum delta T r. Now, what is the minimum possible radius of curvature at the tip? is possible here. So, when the minimum possible radius of curvature at the tip when delta T r equal to so delta T r maximum values of the delta T r can be maximum of it ma can go up to the delta T 0. So, delta T r can be goes up to the delta T 0. So, that is the maximum extent it can go. So, delta T 0 that means it is basically T m minus T infinity. So, so, with this condition this maximum possible radius of curvature is basically corresponds to the what is the critical values of the nucleus size. So, if we do that then we actually estimating or the nothing but the critical nucleus size. So, critical nucleus size r star equal to 
twice gamma Tm by Lv delta T0. This we have already calculated. We have uh, we have seen the in, in that case is the homogeneous uh, nucleation process. This is the size of the uh, the critical size of the nucleus is this. It depends on the delta T. So therefore, but here you can the maximum possible values of the the R star. So therefore, in general, delta T R can be estimated. So delta T in terms of the uh, delta T0 basically this is the R star and here is the R we can see the delta T R is corresponds to R here delta T R is linking with the R but here uh, delta T0 is basically linking with the R star size of the critical size of the nucleus. So therefore using these two expression we can find out delta T R generation uh, delta T R can be given the ratio of the R star by R into delta T0. Delta T0 total available degrees of undercooling in this particular case. So now uh, we can see that total delta T0 equal to delta Tc by delta Tr. Also velocity also we have already calculated the, Ka, the growth rate KL by LV delta Tc by R. If we put this one delta Tc we have already calculated delta Tc by R. So KL by LV and delta Tc equal to we can see in terms of the now uh, delta T c equal to um, uh, sorry delta T c equal to here delta T c equal to delta T 0 minus delta T r. So, delta T 0 minus delta T r we can put it and also find out that uh, delta T 0 minus the delta T r in terms of the ratio of the r star r into delta T 0. We can put it delta T 0 is common basically we are getting this expression that is the growth rate in terms of these parameters. Now, when you expect that tip velocity equal to 0 that means when r equal to r star then tip velocity equal to 0. So, this kind of the conclusion we can make r equal to r star means critical size of the nucleus in its reaches in that case the growth velocity is basically 0. So, when growth velocity will be 0 and but in that case the growth velocity will be uh, positive in that case that uh, 1 minus r by r star should be greater than 0. So, some value. So, therefore, uh, in that case we can get some positive values of the velocity v. So, we analyze that at critical size of the nucleus the growth rate equal to actually 0 theoretically. Now, due to the uh, Gibbs Thomson effect and if we r tends to infinity that means the radius of curvature tends to infinity and in that cases due to the slower heat conduction. So, that will be uh, that we can find out how we can find out if r tends to infinity we can see that uh, okay. So, uh, r tends to infinity uh, that means this part will be also be uh, uh, when t velocity equal to 0 r equal to r star when r equal to r star then it becomes 0. But when r tends to infinity that means uh, 1 by r equal to 0. So, in that cases this effect will be uh, 1 by r equal to 0. Uh, therefore, this is also in that cases also velocity growth rate also be 0. So, that means R tends to infinity is basically condition uh, with that uh, when the neglecting the Gibbs Thompson effect and slower heat conduction. Now, uh, the maximum velocity we can see that even we, uh, the growth rate we can dv by dr because r is the variable here we put it and the, we can p this is the constant term p dr by we can perform this dv by dr. So, with this condition we can say dv by dr equal to 0. So, that means that um, the dv by dr is an optimum uh, values of the uh, this uh, velocity uh, the growth rate when r equal to twice r star that is the optimum values of the growth rate we can see. So, therefore, the, the velocity will be getting between r star the growth rate uh, will be having some positive value the between the uh, r star to 2 times of the r stars uh, when r equal to um, r equal to r star to 2 times of r star then we are getting the growth velocity from 0 to the maximum value. So, this kind of the uh, uh, conclusion we can make uh, from the de development of the thermal dendrites associated with the, the uh, solid liquid interface movement in case of the uh, pure metal. Now, we will try to focus on the, the alloy solidification. So, once you understand the, the this uh, pure metal then this uh, solidification of the single phase binary alloy system uh, we can we can we, we, we can analyze. 
So, first we have to understand that uh, this diagram actually and we see the binary phase diagram. Here you can see the x axis represents uh, the concentration, the solute concentration also. So, we, we know that solute concentration, concentration that means suppose one particular binary alloy having composition equal to x0 and this two solid lines this this line and this line the uh, liquidus line and the solidus line above which it is the liquid phase below which it is the solid phase solidus and in between the the equilibrium between the solid and the liquid phase exist. So, this is basically the alloy we are assuming the alloy having composition x0. Now, solidus and liquidus line we are assuming for simplicity these are the straight line and we define as a partition coefficient partition coefficient this basically k equal to that one particular temperature that x s by x l. So, that is the values of the uh, partition coefficient and in that case we are assuming that x l is the liquid composition and x s is the solid composition in this diagram and we will explain in one by one and the I mole fraction of the solute and the solid in the liquid that indicates the x l and x s but other cases the hypothetical phase diagram here we are assuming k as a constant. So, actually k is the independent of the temperature. So, independent of temperature means k one particular temperature we define for an alloy system. So, in that in that sense we are assuming k is the independent k is the uh, the value of the k is actually constant. So, but k is the ratio of the x s by x l. So, that is defined within this the 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 between the solid as and the liquid as temperature zone and uh, that or in most of the cases we can say this kind of the mossy zone that mixture of uh, solid and liquid they are in e equilibrium. Now, solidification of the alloy system is actually a uh, little different in the sense that it is entirely depends on the solute concentration at the particular temperature and if you observe that solute concentration is basically varying with respect to temperature. So, at the different temperature the solute concentration in the solid phase and the liquid phase are different. So, for example, if we take the concentration of the alloy initials at room temperature concentration of the alloy equal to x0. So, in that case when it is reaching to the melting point temperature melt it then a composition in, in that case that at temperature T1 temperature T1 if you observe at temperature T1. So, therefore, temperature T1 is the in that case composition equal to x0, but temperature T1 it exists in the liquid phase. So, in the liquid phase the solute concentration of this uh, alloy is x0, but when it is uh, even at T3 temperature for example, we assume the T3 temperature, but T3 temperature for the same alloy the with the same composition of the alloy x0 composition of the T3 temperature but T3 temperature the composition of alloy equal to x0, but it is in the uh, T3 it is in the solid phase. So, T1 temperature it is in the liquid phase and T3 temperature it is in the solid phase and both the cases is composition equal to x0. Now, suppose I am considering the some intermediate temperature say for example, temperature T2. At temperature T2 that we can see that this is the temperature T2. So, temperature T2 the alloy system at the equilibrium condition the alloy system the composition will be this 2. So, temperature T2 this alloy the alloy x0 it is is a mixture of the liquid and the solid phases, but the liquid pass the composition of the liquid phase is the composition of liquid phase is x l. So, that is the and the x l composition which is more than that of the x0. Uh, concentration, but uh, that uh, in the at T2 temperature the composition of the solid phase is X S in in the, sorry uh, uh, something different value here uh, um, so something different but which is less than that of the uh, sorry this is X S so at temperature uh, less than um, at temperature T2 the composition of the uh, phase uh, solid phase is the x s. So, that means actual composition of the alloy is x 0, but this composition of the liquid and the solid phase is varying with respect to temperature. So, temperature is gradually decreasing then concentration of the liquid phase of this particular alloy is actually increasing, but concentration of the solid phase is actually decreasing depending upon the nature of the this phase diagram of this particular alloy system. 
with this understanding we define the different terminology here. So, at k x 0 this particular uh, at temperature T 1 the, uh, the uh, this is the value composition k x 0 and x e the eutectic composition and x e, but at this temperature T 3 if it is in the we, we assume in temperature T 3 uh, for this in this case it, it is x 0 by k in this case because uh, here we can find out that x 0 is the actual composition and k partition coefficient if we consider partition coefficient consider then in that case uh, x s equal to k into x l k into x l means here the liquid phase composition equal to x 0. So, that is why uh, at this particular point here k equal to x s by x l because at this temperature this is the uh, liquid composition concentration of this alloy. So, therefore, x is equal to k into x l, but x l means here x 0 composition x 0. Similarly, at this particular point here k equal to uh, x s x s uh, that means x 0 by x l. So, therefore, in this case the x l equal to x 0 by k. So, these are the composition of the liquid phase at this particular temperature and x is the eutectic composition we will try to understand the different way. So, therefore, with this understanding in practice solidification actually depends on the temperature gradient we observe here it depends on the cooling rate also it depends on the growth rate. Therefore, three different conditions can be considered theoretically one is that that when solidification occurs that means it is transforming from gradually in alloy system from uh, higher temperature to gradually cooling down to the lower temperature that means the, the phase transformation from solidus temp liquidus temperature to transforming gradually to the solidus temperature. In that case during this transition we can say that there might be three different situation may arise one is the at infinitely slow uh, that is called the equilibrium uh, solidification condition. So, in final slow process, it is not a very rapid process. The solidification occurs in the sufficient time, and we are assuming the there is the infinitely time is available to uh, change gradually from reaching from the liquidus temperature to the solidus temperature. So, that is generally called as the equilibrium solidification condition. This way, one situation arise, or in practical, also sometimes the solidification may happen that with no diffusion in the solid phase, it is happen the situation. We can assume theoretically that there is no diffusion in the solid phase, but we are assuming the perfect mixing in the liquid phase occurs. So, this is one case and there is another case solidification may happen with no diffusion in the solid phase, but only diffusional mixing in the liquid phase. So, these two differences the one case is the mixing in the liquid perfect mixing in the liquid, but here diffusional mixing in the liquid definitely there is a the two there is a must be some differences between these two cases we will try to explain that uh, in the gradually. So, in the first equilibrium solidification of the single binary uh, single phase alloy. So, here we can see that uh, we can assume there are so many assumptions with this thing first we assume the assuming the straight solidus and liquidus line we have seen that we are not the we are following the solidus and liquidus line is the straight line and infinitely slow cooling is followed. So, that means very slow cooling is followed in this particular case and uh, liquid and solid phase are uniform. We are assuming an average liquid composition follow the liquidus line in this case and average solid composition also follow the solidus line. It means that equilibrium conditions the both are following the solidus and liquidus line when it is transforming from the liquidus temperature to the solidus temperature. So, therefore, three different conditions we can assuming that things we can start that the solidification start at temperature T 1 and then uh, solid forms small with the composition K x 0 and even further lower the temperature temperature lower and the more solid actually forms, but cooling is slow enough to allow the extensive solid state diffusion. Here for extensive solid state diffusion is uh, uh, basically we are allowing the diffusion to occur and that is a that is the characteristics of the very slow cooling process. So, therefore, we, we can say that marking here also that it started with this thing 
the T1 temperature, the uh, the composition Kx is a solid forms at the at the T1 temperature, the solid forms at the in the this composition Kx0. So at this particular position, that T1 temperature. But when T2 temperature, solid forms at the this composition, this corresponding composition, and liquid form in this part is corresponding composition Xs and Xl. Okay, and similarly when this this to the um, uh, this three uh, T3 temperature, then the in that case the uh, liquid forms the last drop x0 by k, but the solid is having composition x0. So, that is why we can explain this thing and here you can see that it is the at particular intermediate temperature between T1 and T3 that means between solidus and liquidus temperature of this particular alloy system. So, here the xs and between the x0 because the composition of the solid phase will be low. Uh, at the intermediate temperature and composition of the liquid phase will be more as per the uh, the phase diagram in this case. So, it, it will be the x l and so therefore, the composition x here and we can see that when heat is extracted the interface the solid liquid interface is gradually gradually moving on one side to another side. So, therefore, enters phase movement we can see that solid phase this is the liquid phase and since we are assuming the very slow cooling, so every, each and every point the equilibrium condition is achieved. So, therefore, excess to reaching the XL and this is the intermediate composition X0 at particular temperature uh, T2. So, therefore, the solid and liquid will always be the homogeneous in this cases because having sufficient time for the diffusion to occur and that is the homogeneous with the composition following the solid as a liquid as line because once it is necessary to follow the solid as and liquid as line. In that case, there must be some variation of the composition if we follow the solid dust and liquid dust line or a fixed composition x0 that means the composition vary with respect to temperature. So, lowering the temperature gradually the composition along the solid dust and along the liquid dust line is gradually gradually uh, one case is it is increasing liquid phase um, liquid phase but solid phase the gradually increasing but that has to be maintained. So, that is why the sufficient time is there diffusion allowing the diffusion to occur. So, therefore, homogeneous composition is maintained and as per the solid as and liquid as line. So, therefore, the amount of the solid or liquid at any temperature is basically the uh, can be given by the lever rule. So, proportionate way we can find out the by applying the lever rule we can estimate the solid fraction and liquid fraction at any particular temperature in this during the solidification process. So, therefore, solidification is in this case one dimension and it is represented by the above figure we have already mentioned the figure, uh, but at the T temperature T 3, but what happens at temperature T 3 suppose I can take an example at temperature T 3 what happens temperature T 3 that in that case this is almost reaching this almost reaching to the solid as temperature. So, temperature T 3 if it is completely solid converted to completely solid then composition should be x 0, but at temperature T 3 or I can say close to the temperature T 3 if last drop of the liquid is about to solidify. So, last drop of the liquid must be having the composition at x 0 by k because this is the T 3 temperature this is the liquid phase. So, liquid phase composition should be x 0 by k. So, suppose last drop of the liquid having the composition x 0 by k, but when that drop will be converted solidified to the solid phase, then its composition will change from x 0 k by x 0 by k to the x 0. So, that is the happens associated with the uh, welding process. Now, now we will try to discuss the second case. Suppose there is no diffusion in the solid, but there is a perfect mixing in the liquid phase. What will happen? So, no diffusion in the solid, perfect mixing in the liquid phase. In that case, let us look into uh, the first what the assumptions or characteristics behavior uh, usually observed during this particular solidification process. So, here first cooling with the efficient string in the liquid basically in practical when the we, we do not control the we are not giving sufficient time to reach the equilibrium condition. So, this situation may arise. So, in that case the uh, in theoretically it is maintained by constant efficient steering of the liquid. So, some kind of the convec uh, convection can be given to the liquid phase such that perfect mixing in the liquid is basically maintained, but at the same time there is no uh, not allowing the diffusion to occur in the solid phase. So, in this case we are assuming that the uniform liquid composition at any time since we are allowing some convection to occur uh, therefore, uniform liquid composition at any point of time and 
assuming the local equilibrium at the solid liquid interfaces exists. Third, liquid composition is basically following the liquidus line. So, this liquidus line, the liquid composition is changing as per the liquidus line. But solid composition changes with position as a result of the solidifying at decreasing temperature. But in that case, it is it mean to say that it is not exactly following the solid line because it is not the equilibrium solidification. So, therefore, we are, we are not allowing the no diffusion to occur. So, therefore, it is may not follow the it definitely it will not follow the solidus line. But average solid composition uh, lower in the solute concentration than the solid average solid composition lower than the solidus line. So, therefore, it is following the path composition is following this particular path which is which is lower than the the expected for the solidus line which is lower than the solidus line and therefore, it may reach the always reach the eutectic composition the eutectic point basically uh, reach the eutectic point and the terminate the solidification process. So, in that case cooling is very rapid to allow the diffusion to allow the cooling is very rapid means uh, the when converting to the solidification phase we are not allowing any diffusion to occur, but at the liquid phase we are constantly maintaining the the, the uh, perfect mixing the liquid phase. So, we are maintaining the solute concentration in the liquid phase. Therefore, liquid composition kept homogeneous by external steering, but as in this cases also we are assuming the unidirectional solidification uh, in this particular case. Now, the similar k equal to x s by x l and we are seeing this thing, but only difference is that that in this that the solidification line is actually following this way the that mark dotted uh, line by red color the solidus line is following because we are not allowing the diffusion to occur. But of course, some sort of diffusion is occurring over the time. So, that is why it is not exactly following the always not keeping the kx0 value kx0 constant rather I can say that it is between the solidus and the kx0 the solid concentration exists in the solid phase. So, note uh, in that case now uh, what we can explain this thing solute is basically when the solidification to occurs. So, solute is rejected in the liquid phase. So, definitely the because cons concentration in the liquid phase is actually increasing uh, if it follows the liquidus line and raises its concentration above x 0 definitely above x 0 because at any point at any temperature between T 1 and T 3 the composition of the liquid phase is much more. So, therefore, it even it is more than that x 0. So, therefore, concentration is above x 0 always, but temperature of the interface must decrease below T 1 before further solidification to occur. So, therefore, temperature definitely temperature must to decrease T 1. So, we can when there is a uh, we try to maintain the this uh, the slope of the liquidus line. So, temperature further sustain the solidification process temperature must be lowering so that it will maintain the, the liquidus line in case of the liquid phase because we are maintaining externally we are maintaining the concentration of the liquid phase by allowing the convection. So, therefore, next layer of the solidified will be slightly richer in the solute than the first solid solid. So, not exactly that following this vertical line rather I can say that it is not following this line, but other to follow the little bit richer that means solute concentration on the solid phase the is increasing, but it is a below the solidus line. So, therefore, liquid becomes progressively richer in solute at the solidification takes place at the progressive the very low temperature lowering the temperature the liquid concentration is basically uh, the composition of the liquid phase gradually increasing even for the solid also gradually increasing, but not at the rate of the equilibrium like the equilibrium. Uh, or case or in, in, uh, in like what we observe in the first case. So, therefore, at any stage during solidification local equilibrium is actually existence to exist at the solid liquid interface. So, I can say like that we started with the this at temperature T 1 k x 0 uh, at this particular uh, the at per se suppose at time t equal to T 1. So, at time equal to T 1 the composition for the solid phase is equal to k x 0. So, here we started the k x 0, but actual composition equal to x 0 and liquid phase the uh, liquid phase the composition will be the x 0 because at T 1 temperature this is the solid phase this is the liquid phase. The composition of the liquid phase will be x 0, but composition of the solid phase will be the k x 0. So, that we are observe k x 0 and liquid phase equal to x 0 uh, at T equal to T 1, but if T equal to uh, T 2 between T 1 and T 3 temperature. So, here 
k x 0 to k x it is gradually decreasing k x uh, gradually increasing k x 0 to certain value k x 0 to x s but below the x 0. So, therefore, below x 0 so k x 0 to x s in the solid phase the this is the concentration varying but x s at the the at the interface the equilibrium exists at the interface solid liquid because we are assuming the solid liquid interface there is a existence of the equilibrium conditions maintaining and then liquid phase we are maintaining the homogeneous so liquid phase we are maintaining the constant values of the the solid concentration so at temperature t2 the liquid phase might be having xl the solid concentration will be xl so here we are maintaining the solid concentration xl at the liquid phase so it should be the the parallel line it should be the parallel to the the horizontal line but it should parallel line the horizontal okay and uh, when it is going beyond uh, close to the uh, this temperature then solidification terminates. So, here k x 0 is gradually solid phase in the x reaching to the x max maximum values of the maximum solubility of the in the solid phase it reach and even the even though there must there is a some liquid phase also that liquid phase will be uh, here the liquid phase will be in the composition the the x e this is the maximum values of the solute concentration x e after that solidification will terminate. So, therefore, the solidification will terminate or form the some kind of the eutectic composition at the values of the x e here you can see, but here the vertical line indicates that that the equilibrium is maintained the local equilibrium is the solid liquid interface equilibrium is maintained. Similarly, for the analysis we can do that that since there is no diffusion in the solid phase we are assuming that the mean composition of the x bar x is the always lower than the solid liquid interface definitely the composition the the composition is always lower than the the uh, the, the solid liquid interface and values of mean composition of the solid is always lower than that the, the what is the composition exactly at the uh, interface solid liquid interface so therefore relative amount of the solid and the liquid at any interface temperature is actually followed by the lever rule between x s bar and x l. So, remember this is where mean composition of the this thing. So, mean composition can follow the lever rule between the x s and x l and we can find out the composition of the x l, but the actual composition of the x s and x l at the particular then we in that case we cannot apply the lever rule. We see that so, when liquid may richer in the solute uh, than the x 0 by k that is possible because when till liquid phase exists, but beyond the temperature T 3 below the temperature T 3 then it can go up to the temperature eutectic temperature T e and composition will vary accordingly. So, therefore, if the solute can be lower than that x 0 by k richer than the x 0 by k is possible and it can go up to the eutectic composition x e. So, once it reaches the eutectic composition the solidification terminate at close to the eutectic temperature and it forms the eutectic composition or eutectic structure there say for example, to different phases alpha and uh, beta phase some it will form. However, the completely solidified bar will then have a solute distribution with x s bar equal to x 0 once it is then that complete solidification bar will may having a solid distribution. So, that means solute distribution is might be ha having varying, but part certain part the composition can be overall composition can be the in the solid phase can go up to the effective composition can be x 0 there might be some distribution composition variation might be there, but effective composition in the final bar will be the x 0. Now, in this case we can see that what kind of the rule we can apply to estimate the uh, phase fraction uh, that will try to estimate we try to understand here. So, here you can see that variation of the x s. So, variation of the uh, composition of the solid phase along the solidified bar which can be it just referred to this figure is the solute rejected in the liquid beca because the no diffusion to occur uh, during the solid phase. So, when temperature is gradually reducing. So, it is expected that the solute concentration will gradually decreasing. So, therefore, that or uh, even we are not allowing to the depletion to occurs in the solid phase therefore that solute concentration will be rejected by the solid phase it will be uh, the accepted by the liquid phase and then if once we make this thing making the this particular phenomena what is rejected by the solute phase will be accepted by the liquid phase and therefore that results in the increment of the solute concentration in the liquid phase make is equal 
then we can reach certain expression to understand the estimate the fraction of the solid and liquid phase under local equilibrium conditions. So, here you can assume that this is the, the varying the solid constant k x 0 to here in this particular point x s the, the local equilibrium exists at the interface. Suppose the solid fraction is increasing from f s to f s plus d. So, this corresponds to the solid fraction f s and this corresponds to the solid fraction f s plus d f s. This is a solid fraction f s is the total weight fraction of the solid. This is increment for example, certain period of the uh, about a, a small increment this thing, but at the same time the liquid composition concentration also increases the composition x l to x l plus d x l there is increment. So, this the, this area actually indicate that comp part and this area indicate that the the solid fraction increases and this is the liquid concentration increases. Now, we make it this balance in this way that here the x s the x l minus x s. So, solid uh, uh, that composition of the x s the x l is the liquid composition uniform, but x s solid composition at the interface. So, solid composition at the interface minus x l. So, and this difference equal to d f s. So, f s to f s plus d f s. So, d f s the, the solid fraction actually increases. So, d f s into there is a between these two the composition liquid composition solid composition x l minus x s into d f s is equal to basically we are calculating this area red zone and other way calculate another area. So, here also this what is the liquid phase uh, the presence of the total weight of the liquid fraction is equal to 1 minus f s. So, f l equal to because uh, f l equal to 1 minus f s such that f l plus f s equal to 1 always. So, 1 minus f l this is the liquid phase and increment of the concentration solute uh, composition x l to x l plus d x l. So, into d x l make it equal this two area f s is the volume fraction of the solidified it is basically, but in this case we are neglecting the molar volume between the solid and the liquid phase is actually ignored in this case. So, molar volume increment we are uh, ignored in this case and once we do that then also we can find out one boundary condition because at initially x is equal to k x 0 when solid fraction was 0. So, when solid fraction was 0 then composition of the uh, uh, solid was the x s was the k into x 0. With this condition we can find out uh, this uh, expression the x l into x s and we use the k equal to x s by x l. So, here the x l equal to x s by k x l equal to x s by k minus x s into d f s equal to 1 minus f l. Similarly, d x l we represent the d x s by k. So, here we represent it and from there we can make the balance here and uh, integrating integration with the boundary conditions here. So, changing the boundary from 0 to reaching the solid fraction f s. So, initial to final here initial the at initial when f s 0 at that x s was k x 0. So, here k x 0 to x s. So, some intermediate temperature this is the uh, solute uh, composition solid composition x s. Once you do perform this integration we can reach this expression like that that k minus 1 logarithm of 1 minus f s into l n x s by k x 0. So, therefore, we can reach this expression further that x s equal to k into x 0 into 1 minus f s to the power k minus 1, but we know f s plus f l equal to 1. So, therefore, x s equal to uh, again x s equal to k into x l. So, k into x l and k x 0 into 1 minus f s equal to f l. So, f l into k to the power minus 1. So, here x l equal to x 0 into f l to the power k minus 1. So, therefore, this equation is the basically non equilibrium lever rule and we can utilize this particular equation in this uh, to understand what is the solid fraction liquid fraction. When the solidification is the particular case we are assuming there is no diffusion in the solid phase, but there is a perfect mixing in the liquid phase in that situation we can find out this equation is applicable. But remember when there is a equilibrium solidification we can utilize the lever rule because lever rule is just uh, the proportionate way we can estimate the fraction of the solid fraction and liquid fraction uh, during the solidification, but in this case we cannot use the this this also called the uh, non equilibrium lever rule. So, here it is not linearly related to the other parameter. So, it is basically non linearly it is related. So, therefore, if k less than 1 it means that 
when there is a no diffusion in the solid there will always be some eutectic in the last drop of the liquid to solidify. I mean to say that that to comply with the, uh, the solu uh, composition of the liquid phase the gradually is increasing. But at the same time there may might not be no diffusion occurs in the solid phase. So, therefore, it is there is a termination point will be one particular point when it is reaching the uh, lowering the temperature gradually during the solidification. So, so therefore, it can reach the close to the eutectic composition. So, when the last drop of the uh, liquid we might be having the eutectic composition. So, that means x 0 by k uh, in particular cases, but this is will be uh, uh, last this can be estimated the fraction of the uh, liquid and solid it can be estimated, but in this case that k should be always less than, but this is valid if k is this equation is valid actually if k is less than 1. I think that is all uh, for today. So, next class I will try to discuss the, the, the third cases that uh, we are assuming the no diffusion in the solid phase, but we assume the diffusional, uh, diffusional flux uh, uh, allowing in case of the uh, liquid phase. Thank you very much for your kind attention.